Hey everyone, the pattern I'm going to be tying for you is a quiltagon. This is a Devin Olson pattern. Uh, it's a paratagon fly. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple techniques on how to keep this fly very thin and narrow. Um, like all paratagon flies, they should be narrow. Uh, but where I see people struggle is where they put that, uh, that flash butt in on the fly. And I s tend to see reverse tapers. And then to compensate, there's a lot of thread buildup and the fly ends up being a lot bulkier than it should be. Um, so I'm going to show you how to keep it thin. And also I'm going to show you how to deal with stripped peacock quills. Uh, they tend to be very brittle coming out of the pack. Uh, we're going to be using Polish quills. And if you were to take them dry out of the pack and you start wrapping around the hook, they have a tendency to split. Uh, and sometimes break. So my suggestion when dealing with quills is just have a little bowl of water uh, next to your bench. Put water in it when you're tying quills and you don't need to soak them overnight. Just put in however many you're going to tie. If it's two or three or six, I just let them soak in the bowl while I'm prepping the fly and then I just pull them out as needed. So let's get a hook in the vise and I'm going to show you how to tie one up. So the hook we're going to be using, it's a size 16 Hannock 400, and this is a copper 2.8 millimeter bead. The thread is a black UTC 70, and I like any thread that you can flatten because when you're tying any Paragon style fly, keep, keeping them thin is uh, key, so you can do it easily with flat thread. We're going to use Coke de Leon for the tail, and I like using three fibers. So let's pull off three fibers, make sure the tips are aligned. We're going to go ahead and put it on the hook shank. Now, uh, on the hook, I should say. Now, when you put the tail in, counterclockwise spin that thread, and then you can see it, ten it has a tendency to jump backwards when you do that. So then you can just lock in that tail really, really easy. And if it's just a little long, just pull it up there. Okay? Looks good. Now, for the flash butt, we're going to use Flashaboo. And this is a micro-sized Flashaboo. You can use Crystal Flash as well, but I stick with the original pattern uh, ingredients. And he, Devin uses Flashaboo, and I really like it. So to put, we're going to put the Flashaboo on now. So what you want to do is take the Flashaboo put it underneath the hook between the bead and the thread, and then you see with a half a turn, we can catch it and lock it in already. It's much easier to do that. Now, you can just pull it to get it ready. Now, grab the tail and the flash boot together, counterclockwise spin that thread to flatten it out, and now we're just gonna take it down the shank of the hook. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you saw the thread actually touch the tip of that hook. I was lucky it didn't fray. Um, what I did right here is I turned the hook towards the camera. Uh, anytime that you let go of your bobbin of thread, obviously it's gonna hang straight down. So what I recommend is turning that hook away and letting that thread drop so you can grab anything and that way it's not gonna touch the point and end up fraying. So it's just an extra step that is pretty important. So advance the thread forward a couple wraps. Now we're gonna take this flashaboo and we're gonna do one, two and a half turns. We're gonna capture it. It's a little harder with the camera there. We're gonna capture it. And now with flat thread, we're going to advance it forward. Now, what's key is, you see how I'm holding this flashaboo? You want to keep pulling the flashaboo forward because it's going to keep it nice and level on the hook, which is really key. Okay, now we can go ahead and cut the excess off. And make sure every now and then, as you're advancing thread up and down the hook, Every now and then you've got to stop and you've got to spin it counterclockwise because what happens is the thread has a tendency to start going clockwise on you and it cords up. So you just want to make sure that you keep it thin that way. Okay, so now 
we're gonna reach into our water here. We're gonna pull out a quill. Now, first of all, all quills aren't created equal, so you gotta you know, be selective when you're looking through the pack. Pull out the ones that have nice edging and coloring. So you're gonna see on this quill, you have a thick end and you have a thin end. Then you have an edge that's dark, and then you have an edge that's light. So we wanna use the thicker end, okay? You don't wanna use the thinner end because you're gonna have better coloring and segmentation when you use the thicker end. What's key here though is you wanna make sure when you tie this quill in, have the dark edge facing down. So right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna prep it, and I am going to cut at an angle here at the end. And I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna grab it with, now, first of all, we need to advance the thread back down to the butt, right there, to the flash butt. Now we're gonna grab this corner right here, that angle. You see that was really easy. Now, and we're gonna advance it up with flat thread. Now, do you see that when I captured it, it was at an angle? So we wanna make sure it's jutting out at about a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna build a slight taper here. That's a slight taper, it's perfect. We're gonna go ahead and put that on the cradle. Now, we're gonna take some hackle pliers and we're gonna spin it up and it's a little harder just because I need to do it because the camera's in the way. So we're gonna grab it with the pliers. Now we're just gonna slowly spin this up and just take your time with this. You just want a nice even spacing and you can really see that quill is really standing out. I really like how that looks and stop with the quill on top, right there. Capture it with the thread, I'm sorry, the uh, camera gets in the way so it makes it a little harder. So the reason we wanna stop with the quill on top there is I'm gonna show you why in a minute here. So clockwise spin the thread, it cords it up and now you can really lock it in. And what I do is the reason I put it on top there is it's a lot easier to cut it. Now I can go in here with my scissors and cut it that way, but the easy thing to do is take really sharp scissors and you can lean it up against the back of the bead and then just kind of knife it off. And you see what happens, it ends up cutting it really nice and flush with the bead and you don't have anything sticking up. So now do a couple of whip finishes. I do two, that's all you need. And we're gonna stop with the whip finish on top. We want the thread right on top of the bug. And the reason we want that is because when we cut it here, sometimes there's uh, it frays and it's easier when we put the wing case on to uh, cover that up with the resin. If it's on the side, it ends up sticking out and you have burrs. So, so for the resin, uh, this is Solar Res Bone Dry. There's no label on it. I don't like using the brush applicator. Uh, also, there's some other resins that you can drop it on. I got these brushes from Amazon. They're makeup brushes. I like to paint it on with this. If you don't have these brushes, just use a bodkin. Go ahead and put the resin on the bodkin and then you can rub it around. So we're gonna put a little on the brush here. And when I say a little, you can always add more, but I just like to start out with a little. So now we're just gonna, we're just gonna paint it on. And you can see that quill really pops out when you put that resin on. And I take the edge or the, uh, the arm of this and then I'll just kind of thin it out. I like it very, very thin. And that looks really good. There's a little bit of a, we'll take our light and we'll go ahead and fry it. There's a little bit of that um, thread sticking up, but it's okay, it's on top. We're gonna hide it in the wing case. 
That looks really, really nice. So for the almost last step, we're gonna go ahead and put our wing case on. I use Golf. Uh, once again, there's no label on this. It's black. I like this better than nail polish because I think you can tie the fly quicker. Um, also, it's just you can control it better. There's air in it. I have a little business card here. Not a little business card. It's a normal business card. I take the air out. So I get the resin to the top, and now I steady the vise with my right hand, and I hold it in my left hand, and I'm just going to drop it in the slot, taking my time, and just pull it away easy because it's thick. That looks really good. This is thick resin, so you have time to pull it away and then go ahead and set it down and grab your light. That looks really nice. So for the final step, what I like to do is this uh, wing case, it tends to, uh, it doles out and sometimes it uh, just bangs against rocks and it chips off. So I like to put a little thin, very thin layer of hardest hole on all of my paradigons. So I just touch it just like that. And that's gonna dry flat and it's gonna, keep it much more durable. So there you go. There is Devin Olson's Quildagon. I tie these in three colors. This is natural. I also tie them in a golden olive with a copper bead, which I love. And I tie one with an olive uh, quill and a silver bead, which I think is an excellent uh, bluing olive imitation. So I appreciate you watching. I hope this helped you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Uh, I appreciate all the support you're giving my channel, uh, and I would also appreciate if you would subscribe. And until next time, tight lines, everybody. Talk to you later.